Hey YouTube, TCG Shack here, and um, today with Guardians Rising coming out, uh, it's 1.45 in the morning for me right now, so it will be out today. <laughs> um, I want to kind of do my own meta predictions on what I think will be um, doing better this format, what will be doing worse, and what will be kind of staying the same kind of thing. Um, so the current decks, I'll go through the current decks, explain what I think and I'll go through some of the new decks. Um, first we have Desiplume. I feel like Desiplume, there isn't too much of a change with them. They, the main thing they really gained, I suppose, would be Stable Eye. Not Stable, Sable Eye, that's how I pronounce it. Got one actually right here, got run over by my chair. so. Um, I've, I'm not sure on how that one would go. Um, I expect to be teched into the um, rainbow v variant of Discipline, but I feel like overall Discipline's gonna be round about the same -ish place. I still think it's gonna be top tier. Um, I don't think it really got hurt. At most, um, there's some different decks that kind of have a alright matchup against it. For example, the new Ninetales deck that doesn't really use a lot of items. Um, Sylveon, which can just search for whatever card you want. <laughs> um, so I feel like Desiplume's gonna stay top tier. Not as popular as now, I believe, but still top tier, still gonna be relevant. Um, the other one would be Volcanion. Um, this one, I think, Improved a little bit because of an ah, Turtonator GX. Um, it gives you a really nice card to sit on as well and just do 20 damage with Steam Up. You can do a lot. I feel like uh, it's just a little better, uh, not too much. Um, so I predict um, Volcania is still going to be top tier. Um, Dark Cry, Turbo Dark, I predict is going to go way down in popular. Well, not popular, but I do not expect it to do too well. And um, with the release of Field Blower and the popularity of the Energy Denial decks going up, I feel like Turbo Dark got hurt a lot and they didn't really gain much from this set. And Turbo Dark kind of needs to keep the EXP shares. Man, that light is really bright on <laughs> more. But um, I feel like uh, Turbo Dark needs to keep those EXP shares on to like stream their energy constantly to keep the damage up. And with Field Blower coming out, and people pretty much will be playing it at like a one or a two of. I feel like this really, really hurts Darkrai. And with the new Lycan Rock coming out, it's just a, it adds to it as well. But I feel like it's the field blower and energy denial that really hurts it. Dark Dragon and the other version of Dark Rai, I feel like it got hurt um, a bit, not as much as Turbo Dark. So I think it's better than Turbo Dark. I feel like. Um, Dark Rai is going to be tier 3 now, while Dark Dragons I think is going to be tier 2. And they're not as hurt, they're not hurt as much with the EXP share thing, so I feel like they can still be kind of around. Um, what next deck would be Mewtwo. I think Mewtwo got like so hurt in this set. They gain. I was thinking they might be okay maybe, maybe tier 2, with since they can just tech in Garbodor, but I think, I predict Garbodor is going to be a super popular deck, which would in turn really hurt um, Mewtwo. Um, Tapu Lele, also a great um, ca like attacker against Mewtwo. Uh, Field Blower, getting rid of Lynx, that kind of hurts, hurts all mega decks in a way. Um, but it also gets rid of the garb thing, 
the ability lock guard. So overall, I feel like Mewtwo just got hit too, like just too much things now beat it in a way. Don't get me wrong, it's a good deck, but too much things that I predict in this meta is going to hurt it, which is why I don't think it's going to be really too relevant. Kind of like where Greninja went like in the Sun and Moon. They were good, but they just couldn't keep up with everything. Things just stopped it from doing well. Uh, that's just how I feel of Mewtwo. I don't think it's going to be... It's still going to be played, but not do too well. Um, next would be Mega Ray. Um, I feel like Mega Ray is about tier 1.5 at the moment in the Sun and Moon format. But I feel like it's going to go down slightly uh, to about tier 2 in the uh, Guardians Rising. They gained Rescue Stretcher, which is really, really nice. Um, it means you can just grab that Dragonite straight from the bin, which is really good. You can grab, say, a Mega Ray to just if you need it. And you also have the choice to play stuff like Pseudo Woodle. Because of your speed, this is also the same with the um, Steam Siege Carnivore. Because of your speed, because you play so many Shamans and everything, it makes it so much easier to grab to get a Lele and then just grab Hex and Hex at the end of your turn. Um, I feel like this is probably one of the biggest things with having Lele and be able to Hex much easier on your turn one. Um, Tekken and Pseudo Wudo is okay. Uh, for Guard of War, kind of like transitioning over to Guard of War, for Guard of War, that would really, really help against the Mega Ray matchup. Um, but I feel like they both kind of went down to about tier 2 ish. I think Guard of War is already starting to reach around that area um, in the Sun and Moon. So they're both kind of similar place now. Um, there's a lot of things you can play around with. Rescue Stretcher is a huge help for the two decks being able to grab Dragonite. But I feel like Mega Dex being hurt overall because of Field Blower kind of hurts them a bit. And also the new Garb. I keep thinking about a new Garb like also hurt, hurting the two decks as well. Because they both play quite a, few, quite a lot of items to power through the deck. For Garb of... For Gardevoir, I feel like they have a slightly better matchup against the Garbodor, mainly because me personally, I don't play as much items. I was a I deliberately played it differently because of discipline, and I feel like Gardevoir does a bit better on their item lock than Mega Ray. So, because of that, I feel like it's easier for Gardevoir to deal with. Garbador, but I'm um, just a bit, not too much, but those are two very similar <laughs> engine decks kind of thing. Just four shamans, two hoopas, a dragonite or two, you know. Um, I would say next is Gyarados, and they've been around for a while. They have a lot of good matchup, but because of the popularity of Decidueye, they can't seem to win things because Decidueye is all over the place. Decidueye is probably one of the reasons Gyarados isn't tier 1. I'd still put it at one point, about tier 1.5ish um, at the moment because it does have really good matchups against most of the other decks in the meta but it's just Decidueye stopping it from really get into tier one in my opinion um having rescue stretcher now uh, means all your buddy buddies can be changed to that straight away uh, it, buddy buddy was needed in gyarados to be able to grab the magic card to place it down to be able to grab the gyarados and place it down but also gave your opponent a, um, a pokemon from bin as well whether it be like hoopa dragonite uh, when you're against guard of war or mega ray things like that is like they or a shaman, like if you had to do that, end them to one, for example, but then you get buddy buddy, or they grab a shaman and they've suddenly got a full hand again. Um, 
Rescue Stretcher really helps this deck out, but I don't. I still think it's going to be tier one point five. I don't think it's going to get worse. It's definitely not going to get worse, but it's not going to be good enough to reach tier one because of um, discipline. Um, the Water Toolbox. Um, these are great transitions between decks. Uh, next, I'd say Water Toolbox, and um, because of um, Aqua Patch, the deck does get a bit better. I, I think um, it's it'll either be this or Nine Tails that'll be the water deck to pick. Um, I'll go over Quad Lapras in a bit, but um, uh, the two what like the three water decks that I predict will be well, like, four meta decks I'll predict will be around would be Greninja. Um, I'll go over that. Um, Quad Lapras, um, Water Toolbox, and Ninetales. Um, if I'm forgetting one, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, it's just a, a nice deck overall. It's got answer to many different things. And with Aqua Patch, it means you can charge things up much quicker. It's overall a really nice like buff to the deck. Um, Yveltal, um, for the next deck, I feel kind of going to stay in the same place um having a field blower and things like that is really nice um but i don't see them doing like more because of this set i just see them kind of being around kind of like what they are now so i don't think much is going to change with them same with the bees and the Vespaquen deck, they can adapt really well depending on the meta because they can just change like the Zoroark, maybe they can change um, the Zeb Strikers, the Raichu's example, they can kind of adapt to the meta which is why I think they'll still be relevant but not quite top tier in a way. And the Quad Lapras deck, I just, um, for this I will say what they've done, Sylveon now does better, in a way. Um, I know Sylveon doesn't hurt as, like, doesn't attack as hard, but um, Quad Lapras' first attack, the Collect, is just draw free, while Sylveon is just like, I just take whatever I want to deal with you. Which is why I feel like the utility is so much better. It more than makes up for the lack of damage Sylveon does. Most of the time, um, Lapras two hit you anyway, um, so it's in the same place as where Sylveon is. Um, it probably needs to free hit KO things like the Sigil, if I'm right. I can't remember the exact attack on Sylveon. I think it was one ten maybe. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure, but it's still in the two hit range. I remember that. So I feel like Lapras, it's got Aqua Patch now, but I just feel like it's just outclassed by Sylveon. Um, Espeon Wobbuffet. Um, this is a deck I've not really seen much myself, but I, from looking at the deck, like what the deck done, I don't think it's really going to change much. Obviously, it'll, it might include stuff like Lele and Field Blower and Choice Bands and stuff. But I, overall, I feel like SB on Wob Effect's probably going to stay around the same area. So, like, the same amount of decks that get, like, tops. If any did, I don't think I've seen an SB on Wob deck tip, top yet. So, not too sure on that. I think it'll be about tier 2-ish right now. Mainly because Wob Effect's really good against Desiplume main that's mainly it, i think um umbreon hammer same reason um it's nice that umbreon now has choice band um it's now able to hit the numbers easier with the choice band it means you now do um 120 per attack instead of 90 on the um, exs and gxs so it means you can now one hit um I don't know if I've done the math right on that, but you can now one hit stuff like um, the 2 1 attackers, the, not attackers, 2 1 HP, so the mega Pokemon. 
Um, I'm not sure if it can one hit Gardevoir. Um, I think one twenty. I think you're just off. You you're still free hitting Gardevoir, because of the resistance. Hmm. If you play a Kukui in there, you can hit it. But um, I just feel like Umbreon Hammers is kind of in the same-ish place as well. Quite a few decks of not much is going to change in my opinion. Just have the odd cars, like the staples from the new set put in. Um, Lycanroc, because, uh, this one I'd say, um, I think before I'd say it's about tier 2-ish. But um, I think Lycanroc is going to be about tier 1.5 now with the new Midnight form. It gives you essentially a free Lysander for playing the Midnight form without having to use your supporter of the turn, which is really, really nice. Um, it does get, it does have the weakness to grasp, but in my opinion, um, Desiplume doesn't usually go for use the des des Decidui. <laughs> I was want to say Desiplume, the Decidui to attack too often. Because it is a free cost attack for 90, which isn't too high, but they might use it to attack Lycanroc, but they only run f like 3 or 4 Grass Energy and 4 DCE, so it might be a bit difficult for them to do that, especially with Lycanroc being able to um, Energy Denial if they're not on the right mod, but I think they'd be playing like a couple of Skull Grunt, not Skull Grunts, Flare Grunts as well. And they've also got the midday form to deny energy as well, which is really nice to stall out against Discipline, but you don't really want to stall out against Discipline. Because <laughs> they'll just keep using Feather Arrow constantly. Um, Greninja. These guys, um, I feel like with the inclusion of Choice Band and Field Blower, it really helps the deck hit the right numbers now. Um, it will... Because now with a choice band on a Greninja break, you now hit 170 instead of before where you hit 140, um, 60 on the ability and then 80 on the thing. So it means you can now start one hitting basic EXs and GXs with just one Greninja. Or you just need the choice band and the one energy. Well, two. You need to attach. <laughs> and yeah. Um, but means they're a lot stronger now they can start one hitting things with two breaks you can now two hit um, um, stage ones and megas which is really nice um, I still predict they're gonna be about tier two ish um, I don't think they'll be like super strong but it's a lot more viable now to play them um, two more decks from the current Sun and Moon um, set um, I've got Rainbow Road. Um, I completely forgot about these guys. Um, I've this was the last deck that I remembered about because they've not really been doing much. And with Pseudo Widow now out, it really hurts them even more. But overall, I just don't think they're that consistent anymore. Like they're not consistent enough to be able to keep the damage output that a lot of other decks now do. So, I feel like Rainbow Road probably still tier 3, like where they are now. Just a bit hard because of Pseudo Widow, but I don't think everyone's going to take in Pseudo Widow. The odd decks probably will. And last, but not least of these ones, Passimian. Rescue Stretcher, Revives, all these things, I feel now help the deck overall. Um... They are still going to be a super consistent deck with Energy Lotto now as well. Um, it makes it so much easier to find that DCE that you need. So overall, I feel like Passimian might creep up somewhere, but I still think they're still tier 3. I don't think that they're going to gain too much from this. Although the Choice Band really does help them as well. Nah. <laughs> Um, new decks for the Guardians Rising. Um, I had said some of the things already from the previous decks, which is why um, like things got hit. Um, not hit. 
um, things got, um, in my opinion, not as great. Um, first deck being Toros Garbador, um, probably the most hyped deck right now. Um, it is pr probably going to be super strong. Um, if people don't adapt to playing against Garb, they might they probably just like charge like be able to get that Garb to start one hitting really early. Um, Toros is mainly for the early game to be able to just sit and just attack. And Garb there for the late game to be able to just one-shot things at the end once they've started playing items and stuff like that. Garb is just too strong, in my opinion. Um, I predict this is going to be um, up in the running for one of the top decks, if not the top. Um, second deck from Guardians Rising, Sylveon. Um, Sylveon, um, I think, is going to be a contender for a tier 1 deck as well. Um, the first attack, being able to just find any free cards, is so good. Just finding what you need to be like, right, you're playing this, I'll get this. So I'm ready, go against you. Um, it's the reason that Sylveon would do really well against Discipline, because once just attach energy, get Sylveon, look for your supporters that you need, instead of hope you draw into what you need kind of thing. Um, so I think they're in their contender for top tier. Trevenant Bioplume, um, in my opinion, the idea of this works. You're item locking your opponent, they can't play anything. Trevenant attacks for a lot. But um, I feel like its damage output isn't consistent enough. For example, if they have, say, like an N or a Sycamore, they can clear their hand of what they had, especially if they know they're going against a Trevenant. Um, t like, 15 cards in hand, I will Sycamore that away just to get your damage outputs a lot weaker. I feel like it's easier to play around Trevenant Plume and, like, control its damage in a way. Compared to um, Discipline. Um, so I feel like Trevenant is just a weaker Discipline deck. Um, it's just my opinion. Um, it could do like insanely well. It could be better than Discipline for all I know. But from what I think, I feel like it's not as good. I'll put it, I'm going to put it at like, tier 1.5. Maybe it might be tier 1, but that's just how I feel right now. Um, next deck, um, Ninetales. Um, Ninetales is getting hyped up at the moment because of how because of um, doing well in Japan. Um, but I feel like Ninetales, it's a good deck, but it really relies on Garbador doing well like this is this deck does well because it does so well against Garbador and if Garbador isn't going to be as big here which I doubt Ninetales won't be as good of a deck kind of thing it it's a hard to say one I think maybe like the first couple of regionals um it might not do too well because people I have a feeling people will still play their old decks, trying to tech in some things, and then just play with that because it worked before. But um, uh, unless Garbodor established itself as the best deck, I feel like Ninetales might just be sitting in the sidelines like an anti Garbodor deck. Kind of like what Raikou was against like Mega Rain Yvettel back when Yvettel was like the deck um, before Sun and Moon. Um, it's how I feel it is. Um, next is Lubu Lurantis. Not Lubu. Bulu Lurantis. <laughs> Lubu. Um, I've not looked too much into this deck. Um, I've not really seen it in action. But um, at the, So I can't really say much on this. I'm really unsure on it. But I'm... I personally 
um, from looking at how it plays, I w- would put it on about tier three. Um, but um, like some people I've talked to have said that it should be about tier two ish where of where it is. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure on this deck. Um, same with Tapu Koko and um, the deck built around that. I'm not 100% sure on how that's going to do. I've not really seen much news on it. Well, I know what does and everything, but I don't know how well the deck works kind of thing. It's just from knowing what it does, kind of what the deck will do, and just kind of go off my prediction on that. Um, The last two I'm the most unsure about, but I'm going to put them, say, about tier 3, maybe tier 2. So overall, um, so the Guardians Rising entire tier list I predict, top tier, um, four decks, Desiplune, Garbodor Tauros, Sylveon and Volcanion. Um, about tier 1.5, tri- like nearly there kind of thing. Trevenant Plume, Ninetales, Lycanroc, um, I, I do think Lycanroc has a really good chance of doing well. Um, Yveltal I'm really iffy on putting this here I'm, I did have this tier 2 not that like just a couple of hours ago but it's a good deck and I think that it'll find a way to use like some of the Guardians Rising cards to really make it really strong it's got the new stadium all to the moon so it can get like free retreats and it might even play the pseudo widow just cause it can kind of thing to really hurt to like try hurt your opponent um but this one is in my opinion the one i'm most iffy on putting in tier 1.5 um garados um yes it does like auto lose the discipline but it does still have so many good matchups which is why i still put it here and water toolbox I feel like the Aqua Patch might push this to be our one of the top, like not the like in top tier, but like able to like start topping a lot more events. Tier two, um, I'm predicting Mega Ray, Guard of War. Should also put Guard of War Primal Clash in here too. Um, I feel like they're both very similar, like a bit like power wise, but. I didn't actually talk much about Primal Clash, did I? <laughs> um, I just didn't at all. But um, both Guard of War decks. Espeon, Wobbuffet, I'm putting in Tier 2. Quad Lapras, I still think it's going to get played. But I do think it's going to be outclassed by Sylveon. Um, the Bees, just because it can adapt and stay kind of around. And Greninja. I think the Choice Band really, really helps it out and it does make the math so nice tier three. Oh yeah tier two i moved um i didn't i just put this up as well dark dragon i predict tier two as well yes tier three turbo dark um this just got hurt so much this set in my opinion it gained like next to nothing it, it gained all the moon choice band lele choice band lele kind of goes with everything but um, I feel like they got hurt too much. Um, Passimian, I'm still going to put around here. I don't think they're going to like do super, super well. But they'll still be around. Um, as I said, with Bulu, Bulu Lorantis, um, I'm not sure on this one. Same with Coco, I'm not sure on this one. I'm putting Umbreon Hammers here as well. Mewtwo, because of... Because of um, how much I got hurt by this set as well like too much things from this now hurts new too especially Lele being put into a lot of decks means everyone kind of has an answer to Mewtwo and Rainbow Road just because they were a deck um, around Steam Siege area maybe, um, and Sun and Moon like before Sun and Moon they were kind of around um, but they're still a deck but I'm guessing it's about tier 3. 
Anyway, um, I will be doing a box opening tomorrow once I get home from work. Um, I'll have two boxes. Um, the third box, um, the other half bought, she wants to open it on her birthday, which is like a week away, so not too bad, um, but we'll see what I get. Um, uh, pools wise, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping for um, Hyper Rare Lele, Secret DCE, Secret Rare Field Blower, don't mind Secret Aqua Patch. Um, like, uh, I still need to get the Garbodors, and Secret Energy is nice, but I'm hoping that more, like, I personally want to use most is the, uh, Garbodors, the Choice Bands, Secret Field Blowers, and the Hyper Lelys. Those are my, m and Secret DCEs. Those are my most ones from the set. Wouldn't mind all the others. They're nice to have, keeping as staples kind of thing. But overall, um, just have to wait and see what I get. But overall, I think the set's really good. Hence, I bought an extra box this time. Um, anyway, um, that'll be it for today. Um, I'll probably stream the um, openings tomorrow. So. See you, YouTube.